Hello everybody and welcome to another development log for Battle Tanks, the web-based game I'm creating using TypeScript and 3JS. I want to start off uh, this video first by talking a, a little bit about an announcement relating to both the streams and YouTube. Uh, and that's that you may have noticed this week that it's been a little more quiet than usual uh, in that, you know, normally we were looking at two streams a day earlier, earlier on and now it's, it's, it's actually been a day and a half since I've last streamed. And the reason why I've been doing that is uh, mainly because I read an article online that was talking about uh, streaming and game development, or programming actually, and how this person was only using streaming to uh, build their community behind, behind what they were doing and only to make it, you know, really exciting. You know, more to make streaming more what it's designed for, which is entertainment rather than uh, anything else. Now. Um, what, dif what differentiates that from my usage is that I'm using streaming more as a way to keep myself accountable. That, you know, every day I'm going to, you know, get up and I'm going to, you know, to stream content regardless of how boring it is. And, you know, again in the evening I'm going to stream content assuming that I'm able. And, yet, you know, and that this content, regardless of what it is, is going to keep me on track uh, with development. So, uh, you, and, uh, so I read this article and I was, you know, initially thinking, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I'd probably be able to build the community faster and stuff like that by creating higher quality content. And I was also passing that along to YouTube and, you know, where I would be creating higher quality content that would be, you know, on a less frequently uploaded basis, but would still be, uh, that would be higher quality. So it might, uh, you know, increase the number of viewers that I have and stuff like that. The issue with that, uh, with that line of thinking for me anyway, is that I lose my sense of accountability. So over the last two days, because I haven't been streaming, I haven't been as productive. I haven't been as focused on what the next step of this game is going to be. I've just been a little more scatterbrained, and that's not something that I need right now. So I, instead of doing that, where you know I'm creating this high quality content that people are going to want to see. It's more, you know, if you want to see it, great. I'm more than happy to, you know, to show you everything that I'm making. I, I, that's, you know, that's definitely part of the reason why I'm doing this. But the main reason why I'm doing this is, is self-serving, and that it's keeping me accountable and keeping me on track and making sure that I can complete my goals. Because right now, if I don't do this, I have a, I have a much higher chance of not completing my goals. So, and that's what I want to, invent. that's what I want to prevent. So now I get to show you what I've done this week. So uh, if we go over here to the game, so uh, you'll notice I've got split screen here just to show you a couple things. So first thing uh, is that you will notice, uh, uh, at least the biggest thing last week, was that I had that big ugly cylinder around the playout. That's been removed because collision detection is now implemented. So that works along all surfaces, uh, regardless of how many surfaces you collide with and it works along all axes. So you can see here how the player uh, is sort of pushed away from the wall. You'll notice that here, uh, this is something I was somewhat proud of, in that as, as I'm coming towards this wall, the whole tank is actually pushed away. So uh, that's uh, collision detection fully implemented, and if you, that was a very exciting thing to finish up. So I'm glad that that's all taken care of now. And I can move on to the next thing, which, incidentally enough, I've actually already uh, partially started working on. So, if we go ahead and connect our players again as usual. And now, if you watch this guy, he's actually, they're actually both going to teleport in 10 seconds. And this is to uh, move the players to the game spawns, when the, when, like, just like that, when the game moves from a preparing status to a, to a match started status. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because, obviously, in this arena, it doesn't really help a lot considering the players can just see each other right away, so they can just beam a shot right, right away just to, you know, just to finish the matchup, you know, just like that. Um, but, in the, but, you know, in a more of a production level setting, we're talking about an arena where there are many different sections and areas to, to the arena so that, you know, two players are not going to be able to see each other right away, much less shoot at each other from, you know, from this kind of distance. So, 
Uh, so that's that's the reason for that implementation, and that's again moving the game closer to that, you know, complete status of having a, a full game loop. And then finally, one thing I wanted to show you, if you'll pay attention to the console, which is uh, the screen on the left, if I click my mouse and have my turret aimed at the enemy player, you notice you get this message. And now we're going to do this again, uh, this time over here, and you can see that we don't get a message. The reason why is the reason why that's happening is because I have implemented uh, collision detection uh, using uh, is that I've implemented a sort of hit detection, if you will, rather. So you can see here in this object we have the player and the target, which have the res which have the respective guest names or which have the respective player names, IDs, and stuff like that. All the data that you will need on the server side. So now on the on the uh, and as you can tell, that happens here. So if I click there, you can see we get another message. But now if we go behind this wall, you can see that that message, uh, even though I'm clicking the mouse and my aim is correct, you can see that the blocks are detected, which is as which is behavior that is expected. So that's uh, all the implementations that I have so far. Uh, in this coming week, I'm going to end up working on several uh, more along the lines of actually uh, getting the handle finished up when a, when a player is actually shot, because right now it's just a one-hit kill. So when I, when I initiate this event, the player will end up being removed from the arena, and then the, uh, and then the match will uh, continue on from there. So in this case, because there's only one player left, that player will be declared the winner. We'll have some music, of course. Uh, there'll be some stats that will be given to the players. And then we'll move from that finishing status where we have a winner and they're able to celebrate and drive around or whatever. And then we'll then rotate into a either waiting status if there's only one player or a uh, or or a uh, preparing status again, uh, just like we had before with the players being able to drive around the arena and stuff like that before the match starts. So we'll have that status implemented afterwards. So that's going to be it for this uh, development log. Thanks for watching. I hope that you'll uh, give the streams a give the streams a watch. I will go ahead and link both the article that I read about this about the uh, about game development or programming streaming, and uh, as well as the uh, stream channel that I have for uh, both on Twitch and many other platforms. So, but I'll go ahead and link Twitch in the description. So, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.